Welcome to the Even Better Podcast, where your host, Seneca Waugh of Your Clear Next Step, brings you exciting content about making communities better by helping people get even better at work. Welcome, everyone. Good morning and hello. This is Seneca Waugh with the Even Better Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are delighted to have you. This is part of our ongoing mission at Your Clear Next Step to help us all have better work days so that together we can co-create better communities. So I'm delighted today to introduce to our listeners, Joe Gonzalez. Joe, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you. This is just awesome. So our team had the chance to meet Joe as part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging initiative in 2022. We reached out to Joe. He is the director of the Latino Heritage Festival here in central Iowa. And he came and just gave us a wonderfully thoughtful and insightful message about what that organization is and does for us and shared his story and and just really helped open our eyes to how diversity, equity, and inclusion plays out here in the Des Moines area. So from that conversation, I said, hey, Joe, would you be part of our podcast and would you come do an episode with me? And he's graciously agreed, yes, he would. And so we're here today with this conversation on five ways that diversity makes us better. So Joe, tell us just a little bit for our listeners, tell us a little bit about you and your story. Thank you so much. Uh, so my story is, you know, after I ta- talk to you guys, you know, I kind of share it with with a lot of people that I came to the United States when I was five years old. I came from Mexico. I was born in Mexico. This country is the land of opportunity. It gave me and my family a lot. And so I think because of that, I kind of got into service for community. So I ended up on the police department. And then now I run the Latino Heritage Festival. And so just giving back and doing whatever you can, working within community is always great to me because I wouldn't have had the opportunities had I not been able to come to this country. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And, you know, as, as far as service service in our communities, just, just this very morning, I had the opportunity to encounter a, a handful of service emergency management professionals who rescued me and my family this morning as our carbon monoxide alarm went off at our own home. So I am you know, just very, very grateful for the service professionals who serve in our community, some volunteers and some who've chosen that as their career, just very, very grateful for those who serve and protect our communities. A shout out to those who have chosen that as their line of work. You know, and also since we're talking about that, today happens to be Veterans Day. And so a shout out to all those that are serving, have served or will serve. We owe a debt of gratitude to our service folks, you know, that uh, protect us. As they say, freedom isn't free. They serve our country. Some give the ultimate sacrifice to keep our freedom. So special day today, you know, also for them. For sure. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. So as we move into this conversation, five ways diversity makes us better, and and you've come with with five different themes and and topics you're going to talk about. But that, let's let's back up just a little bit. Let's talk about when you say diversity. How do you define that? What does diversity mean to you? You know, the diversity. You know, so the the meaning of it. If you look into the dictionary, the condition of having or being composed of differing elements, an instance of being composed of different differing elements or qualities. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the basic definition. However, in the workplace context, it's a little bit different, right, than what we look for. So diversity encompasses the range of similarities, differences each individual brings to the workplace. It includes, but it's not limited to national origin, language, race, color, disability, ethnic identity, socioeconomic status, gender, religion, sexual orientation, veteran status, as we talked about right now, and family structures. Family structures is one of those that people say, well, family structures, well, you know, there are a lot of folks that don't have our, say, Ozzie and Harriet family, so to speak, right? Mom and dad (laughs) and everything. It could be just a single mom. You know, it could be that kids are living with grandparents. They took over, you know, the charge of, of raising them. And so, that family structure sometimes can change. Sometimes in our immigrant communities, family structure is a big, gigantic family because it includes the grandparents, the parents, the kids. It includes several generations, you know, living in the same household because to them, that's the connectivity. That's what their culture is all about is to be together, right, for each other. And so, you know, so that kind of stuff, you know, differs quite a bit. 
Yeah. That's so my, all four of my grandparents are from Finland and the Finnish that our, ours is very much an immigrant story as well. And just thinking about the, the Finnish heritage and way, the way the multi-generational impact is with Finnish families and the watching that play out in our lives and, and I don't know. It, it's it's interesting to see the the way the different different cultures play that out, and and just looking around and seeing, oh look, there's a there's a Finnish subculture right there in you know that place in northern Minnesota, or there's a Finnish culture, and 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 now here in Iowa, you know, there's a Dutch subculture in in parts you know in Pella, Iowa, for heaven's sakes, there's a there's a little community of of a bunch of Dutch settlers that that settled there, and just watching the way that culture plays out. And, and you're right that it's not just necessarily the, the color of your skin, or it, but it's also the way community, the way your heritage may have caused you to look at family or extended structure or the, the way you interact with different generations or your grandparents or your aunts or your uncles and how you may show up all under the same roof sometimes. Yes, sure. absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, when we kind of delve into this right now with the diversity and inclusion, everything, I mean, you could spend you know, days and days going over a lot of things. You know, you try to go over the one one concept little by little because it's thing, or, these are things that people want to do in companies, but sometimes it's difficult where you start. Right. And sometimes it feels like certain people get backed into a corner, like you have to do something. That's how people feel sometimes, right? It's kind of an uncomfortable thing sometimes. And so you have to do it in a way that is welcoming, that people buy into it that people know that this is important because in the in the long run, it's going to benefit not only me on a personal level, but if I work with a company or with community or groups or whatever, it's going to benefit me in all aspects. Yeah. You know, the more I understand it. Well, and and let's let's go there because we're talking about the diversity in the workplace. As you think about your workplace experiences, I mean, you've you've had public service and and working in the police force. You're you're now working in a in a nonprofit in that space. And I mean, like how how does this stuff apply in those different workspaces? It's, they're they're different, but in some cases, this stuff is all the same, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, because it varies, it varies. You know, but it's kind of adaptable to whatever surroundings you're at, whatever you're doing. You know, whether it's nonprofit and I'm working with folks. You know, it's a kind of a different concept than when I was working on the police department. Because in the police department, obviously, diversity is super important. Because when you're protecting a city, the city and the folks living in that. They'd like to see a representation of who they are. Sure. Right. You know, and so I remember when I first came on, we hardly had any minorities, you know, and then pretty soon a few Latinos and African Americans. And then pretty soon the women started joining in the police department, quite a few. And that has grown through the years. And so that makes us better. And I remember at first, you know, some of the guys that had been there forever, uh, officers before me, they were hesitant on having females work on the police department. It's always that mindset, that hardcore mindset that you think because you grow up in a different era that women don't belong in certain jobs. Right. Yeah. And I can attest that, you know, so the women could do better than some of the guys. So it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it depends on who you are, what job you want to do. If that's what the job you're going to do, you're going to be able to do it. You know, you're going to be able to do it to the best of your ability. And it doesn't matter. You know, you shouldn't be held back by gender or or different things. And it was restrictive, too, back then because they had age restrictions, which are important because obviously you can't be too young. You can't be too old to be able to do that type of job. But you can't limit that either if people are able to pass everything. Then so be it. They had weight restrictions and height restrictions. I mean, all kinds of things back then. And this is in the 70s, you know, when I first came on. And so some of the things that get put in place, you know, to kind of limit folks, it's not good because, you know, you have so many great people that would be able to do a job, you know, if you just kind of opened it up, you know, if they can pass everything to get on, then they have a right to. To, to the best of their abilities. Absolutely. I just, what did I just see that Facebook post that's coming around about the 91 year old gymnast? Yeah. I mean, she's doing flips and she's doing the parallel bars and she's doing floor routines. She's 91. She's certainly more fit than I am. Good heavens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, we're kind of blessed that we, have, we live in a country where we can do that kind of stuff. But even in our country, the land of freedom, like I said, years ago, there were so many stipulations and so many limitations on uh, what you could and couldn't do, yeah. uh, those type of things. And so, and, you know, think about, you know, way back when in my era, when I watched TV shows, you know, the TV shows were of a happy family and you had all this and it was just so, just proper. It's amazing to me that you, they even showed smoking 
you know, because it was so limited, it was so structured that you couldn't do so many things. It was just the perfect family. And the sensors, you know, just kind of really blocked a lot of that kind of stuff from from what was reality. Yep. And reality, you know, hey, is that there are just different things that happen, different dynamics, families are different, and that doesn't make them bad at all. You know, it's just that that's just the way they have to do. You know, it was people were looked down on for single moms for years and years and years and years. Right. right? Yeah. You know, and wow. I mean, how, what a difficult thing it would be a single mom to try to raise a family, or if you didn't have a family, just to be on your own without being criticized. Hey, you're not married. You know, you're too old. You know, you should have been married or single moms aren't supposed to be able to do all this. It's tough. You know, they went through so much for no fault of their own because things happen for a reason or because, you know, people weren't getting along. So what? You're not going to stay together if you're not going to get along. And that's another thing. Divorce was looked frowned upon, right? You don't, right? Just right. stuff like that. And so women just have had it just so tough with so many things. And then just about the time that you are you're able to succeed and have women have more rights and more power than here lately with the, what happened with political thing, abortion, no matter what you think about it and everything, you still have to have a right to choose. And especially in certain limitations, you know, certain things that happen, you know, where, where they talk about rape, incest, whatever it may be, to punish a victim after they have suffered something like that. Oh, my God. So, you know, so we have to be, get back to those basic principles of protecting each other and giving those rights that women and keep having the women keep those rights they, they, fought, they fought for. No matter what our opinion is, you still have to have those protections for those circumstances that warrant them having to do that. Well, and for sure, the the diversity of of thought and the the ability to have conversations where we can, even if we disagree, where we can talk about that disagreement in a way that is healthy and respectful, and where we can like, okay, let's let's get to the bottom of this. Let's figure out how to how to how to solve this. Like, how do we get to a a unique, I mean, like to to a solution that we can all live with. And I, I think that's one of the things we've lost sight of in our country as we've we've kind of moved away from the ability to have conversation. And I think this is I'm going to bring this back to your your points here because I got a sneak sneak peek at some of your your five topics, the ways diversity make makes us better. And one of the first ones is this: you allude to something about solving ideas, problem solving, and bringing out fresh ideas. So talk to us about. Let's get let's get right in there. These these ways that diversity makes us better. Your first one has to do with the opportunity to exchange perspectives and to see things differently. And I think I think you're right. Can you can you share that that first idea? What is it about diversity? How does it make us better? What's that first idea of yours? And and expand on that a little more. So you know we're like you said we're able to have the opportunity to exchange unique perspectives with different folks. You know because everybody has a different perspective. It also sparks fresh ideas. You know, because people, you know, or some people that think outside of the box and some people that kind of stay right there, like the story I told you about the guys that had been there forever and they, that's their feeling. They're not going to change those type of things. And then also problem solve. So problem solving is pretty unique because some people are able to do that. And so when you have fresh perspectives, you have diverse perspectives, more and more people, more thought process, more ideas. And it's OK. You talked about the disagreement. It's OK to disagree because disagreeing actually is kind of healthy. Right. Because you disagree, meaning on ideas. Somebody has this idea. Somebody has this idea. But it's not like like a fight or anything. It's just the, the perspective. Right. But then you hone in and you work on things together. You're able to problem solve. Right. Diverse backgrounds, diverse ideas. You're able to problem solve and make things better because you're able to look at it from a different lens. You know, when you're so diverse. Like, here are the things that I bring to the table because of my perspective and my history. And here are the things that you bring to the table because of your perspective and your history. And here are the things that he brings to the table because of his perspective and his history. And if if we bring all that richness of thought and diversity to the table and we look at it, we're like, oh my goodness gracious, look at these, these ideas and these perspectives. We are so much smarter together. We're so much better together. Yeah. The second part of that is you appeal and connect to a wider target market. Why? Mm. Because you have all these folks working for you. So when people see that, they're going to be more interested and, and you're going to have a wider target market because you're living, walking, walking, talking the talk, right? Because you have all these perspectives, 
all this diversity that, that's represented within your company, within your organization. So more people are going to be more inclined to go to you because you have a makeup of folks that look like them, not just what is common sometimes in some companies, you know, where people are all the same, whether they're Caucasian or whatever, and men, you know, that type of thing. So if you have this, this organization, this company where you have women that are in charge or in their, the high levels, you know, that's pretty impressive. And then you have the workers that come from all different backgrounds, you know, and, and so that's kind of cool, you know, because then they see themselves as, oh my gosh, I can support that company because they're really, really, really into making sure there's full representation and everybody has an, a balance, equal chance at working there. Yeah. I, I think there are two in particular in the like product marketing line that that stick out in my mind personally as a consumer. And one of them is Old Navy, for goodness sakes. Old Navy was one of the early ones in, as my kids were growing up, was one of the early ones that started marketing to not just the itty bitties, right? They didn't just market to all the women who were size zero and two. They also started marketing to people who, you know, okay, maybe I'm not a perfect 10. Maybe I'm just a size 10, right? Mm -hmm. So they started marketing to to people of a, a more, I don't know, I eat three squares a day kind of body shape. And they old navy became something that I would I would be interested in purchasing rather than the the those the, their appeal and the the people on their commercials looked more like me than like all the itty bitty skinnies of of so many other product lines. And I remember that appeal when I would see people on their commercials that didn't just look like all the skinny people that that I'm not. I'm like, oh, well, okay. So even, yeah. even in that, that body shape. And then the other one was Dove, the Dove soap, when they started really paying attention to beauty and all the different shades of skin yeah. of the, the beauty line and, and getting like strip off all that makeup and let's look at just beauty skin as it really was. It, those were the two that struck in my mind as really intentional efforts to appeal to that broader market. And all of a sudden more people were buying I, I think from a consumer, I mean, I, my friends and I were talking about it. We were buying their product because all of a sudden we were looking around going, oh, they're trying to appeal to to a, to us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You yeah. also get a better understanding of consumer needs and how to fulfill them when you have a diverse, you know, workplace because you have people from all aspects of life, all, all communities, you know, different minorities and everything. And so they're going to know what the consumer within what their their heritage is, what, what they are, you know, what the consumer needs are and how, what you should do to try to fulfill them, you know? So then that way you can kind of get a, obviously a wider market base because, you know, you have their, your employees that are, understand that, you know, how many times have we gone to places, you know, where, and, and government is one of those things where people always say this, it's just like, you know, big brother government always knows what it tells us what we want. Right. Right. <laughs> Instead of asking and trying to figure out because it's not all the same. And even here in the city, even with city government here, you know, I remember working in the area where we work with neighborhood associations and everything. Not one neighborhood, all neighborhoods are the same. What one neighborhood needs isn't going to be the same with another neighborhood as far as their needs, what they see of importance. Same thing with folks, you know, in community, you know, and everything. And so you can't do the one one thing, you know, it works for everybody type of concept. You have to know. And, and this is a better way to make sure that you understand the, the consumer needs and how to fulfill them when you have a diverse workforce. Yeah, I don't I don't want to gloss over that, Joe, because this is really important for who we are at Your Clear Next Step and the, the message that we share. Because one of the things that we do really intentionally and that we encourage those that we train to do is to spend a lot of time listening. You know, I'm I'm a public speaker. I do a fair amount of talking too, and I'll acknowledge that about myself. But we really intentionally spend a lot of time listening. And there, I can think of no proposals that we've sent out anywhere to do services for anybody else where we didn't first spend time listening. What is it? What is it that you need? And so in, in your theme here on five ways diversity makes us better, and for our listeners, if you're just tuning in, you're hearing Joe Gonzalez, and he's talking to us about five ways diversity makes us better. And the first way was about exchanging your unique perspectives so we can solve problems better with fresh ideas. And a second one was a better appeal to and an ability to connect to a wider target market. But this third one, I just want to, I just want to stop and just anchor on this one because this is about a better understanding of consumer needs and how to fulfill them. And let's pause for a second because this is about listening. This is about 
the reality of diversity, equity, and inclusion, not, not to check boxes and not to say, hi, I'm so-and-so organization and we have checked a box because we did this program or we did that program or we we asked these three questions or we we included these three people in our surveys. No, no. It's because we've actually included people who are not the same as just me. And, and we've actually expanded our reach to include other people and we've closed our mouths and we've opened our ears and we've listened. We've listened to their stories and their journeys and who they are and what they need and what they want and their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations and how they can contribute and and what they want to do in the organization, just as much as what the organization can do for them. Absolutely. You know, and we have to be active listeners. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit, you know, that for a lot of years, there are a lot of times with because there's so much going on in our minds and you're busy and everything that you, you're you not an active listener. Right. And you miss things. And people know that they can see that if you're not. And so I had to program myself, you know, even when I was on the street to make sure I was always listening. But you're always doing other things, too. When you are you know, they're paying attention to them in the moment, no matter what it is, and being an active listener and knowing what they said and then tell them back, you know, because sometimes people talk to you because they need somebody to listen to, right? And in the business world, it's so important, right? Because if you're not listening to folks, they're going to take their business else, elsewhere, right? Yes, sir. And, you know, if you make them feel like, you know, they're not important, right? And so, that is truly, you hit that really right on the head, that that listening is so crucial. So crucial. So crucial. Thank you. So a fourth thing that you've shared that is a good thing about diversity and, and ways diversity makes us better is it increases employee morale and retention. Okay. Talk to me about that, Joe, because there are all kinds of us out there trying to combat this right now, this, this quiet quitting and the morale and retention issues that we've got going on right now. How does diversity help that? You know, you get people from all different aspects. It doesn't improve morale, productivity, retention, and overall company culture, you know, and sometimes it might come at a price where sometimes people don't know what to think of it because some people are just setting their ways, non-acceptant of things. So when they first see it, you know, some I've seen before where some people are just a little bit leery of this kind of stuff, you know, they don't know what to do. But once you have it and once you have it in place and once you're welcoming to everybody and everybody, you know, has, has maybe, a, a, like they say, a seat at the table for ideas yeah. and for, for everything then if you're going to have a richer environment, you know, people are a lot better because you're open to everything. And so, you know, the work morale is better, the productivity is better, and your culture is better because you've got just enough of the diversity to kind of keep everything going. You know, just the interesting topics, the interesting conversation with, with everybody there. Everybody gets a buy-in because they see themselves as a part of that, that company. And mm -hmm. so... I think, you know, the, the important thing is just to be able to be inclusive, to be able to be welcoming and that not just by the company president, not just by HR, but just also the other workers. And that comes with some training to make sure that they do understand everybody from the top down that this makes us a, a better company. Consumers will want to come to us because we represent them a lot more and you know, everybody then will be happier because the morale gets boosted once they understand the concept. It's not about somebody coming in to try to take your job. It's not about force feeding something. It's about actually taking the time, you know, to make sure that your company is very representative of, of you know, of your clients, obviously. And you want that far reach. And so, and people then will want to come and work for you because they hear about that. They always hear about the companies that are diverse, that are welcoming, that, you know, from the top down, everybody understands, you know, their their role and what they do. And the team building uh, it is, is very unique in companies like that because it's, it's already kind of built in, you know, when you have, you know, something special going like that. And uh, I, I think it's just, you know, it, it just, it's a win-win for everybody. Mm, neat. Love, love that. I, I do know within our organization this, this year, um, so we're in November, we've been going on it for about a year. We started uh, with a, an 
introductory conversation, I think in fall of 21, but then a firm commitment in 22, that every month we have had a monthly forum where we as an organization get together with employees and coaches and uh, trainers and even our interns, we get together and we have a one hour a month where we have a a presenter that comes and speaks to us, or we've done a a book club and we've reviewed a book that we read together. And we, we talk about the, the concepts of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, um, from the, the fullest, the the broadest sense of the term. And somewhere partway through the year, I had an employee approach me and she said, I got to tell you, Seneca, I was a little, I was a little leery Mm -hmm. about that. Like, what were you Mm -hmm. trying to do? Um, we don't have time for this. We're a very busy organization and we do a lot and we don't have time for this sort of stuff that you're, you're making us do. And she said, at the beginning, I was, I was a little leery and I got to tell you, it's really, really love those. I look forward to those every month now. So even, even for those who maybe aren't, weren't so sure they, even they are enjoying that, that perspective. You know, and you have to include them obviously, because sometimes they have preconceived ideas and everything. And so, if you don't include them, you know, it's almost like you're force feeding them. So sometimes it takes a little bit to kind of make sure you include them in the process of what's going on, why it's beneficial. Like you say, when you have those meetings like you have, you know, everybody kind of stays on the same level as far as knowing the information, right? You know, nothing is a surprise. Everything is good. They understand the concept. They understand why you're doing it. They understand yeah. it makes everybody better. So, yeah, that's yeah, good. Rising Agreed. tide. We're just trying to lift all the boats. Yes, Absolutely. And then the last one is it's unconscious bias, you know, and sometimes it's one of those things when you talk about unconscious bias that a lot of people maybe don't want to listen to. They don't want to uh, admit that maybe they, 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 uh, they have it. I think we all have it. <laughs> Actually, I know we all have it. We all have it. <laughs> you know, and so that's the first thing that you have to know is we all are raised in certain ways. We were able to see certain things, not see other things, right? And sometimes we have these pre- preconceived ideas that, that come about sometimes. And because we're not born that way, it's kind of learned behavior or, or things that kind of sink in our mind that we have these preconceived, like I mentioned, the preconceived ideas. And so it fights that because it keeps you on that on that path where you have all the information coming in. You know about everything. You know why it's being done. You know why it's important, you know. And it, like you say earlier and in, in when we started this, it's not about checking the box. Right. It's not about saying, well, we did it because it's the right thing to do. Well, you that can be misconstrued as the right thing to do, meaning you kind of have to or what. Right. Yeah. It's kind of we do it because we buy into it, because we know that this is something that's important to our company, that's important to our employees, important to our clients that we you know, that we're this way. And so so when you admit that we all have unconscious bias and we've learned it somehow, but we're trying to fight that you know, and learn. We're life learners, right? We're life learners about everything. And in companies that never stops because in order to be competitive, you have to have the best employees, the best organization as best as you can. And so if you don't have that, then, you know, you're not going to have a good good company. You're not going to have enough client consumers to kind of come to you. And so you're always learning how to make sure that you include everybody in the process that you're a welcoming company to all consumers and employees and you do it because you want to because it's one of those things that you know hey if we don't do it then we're not going to survive type of thing which is true right you're a step up on a lot of folks because you have these (laughs) these meetings periodically about stuff where you learn about those things and you know and and you do it in a way where you include everybody and let them know that we succeed because of this and we succeed because of you, no matter who you are, whichever, whichever employee we succeed, you know, and the, the more diverse that we are, then, you know, then, then the more, you know, success that we will have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, one, one of the things on unconscious bias, I remember when I was first learning about the the concept, the, the reason we all have it is because there's so much data that's always coming at us every day, right? We all, and, and our brains have to shortcut it, right? We can't, we can't possibly process all the information coming at us. So our brains have created these, these shortcuts. And so we process into good and bad. We process into yes and no. We process into safe and unsafe. We process into us and them. Yeah. And it's yeah. the us and them one that's so crazy dangerous. Yeah. And that us and them, if we can create a diverse 
workplace where we can make safe spaces at work and our workspace is full of a diverse team. Like we can look around and our, and our us includes every age group and every ability group and every race, every race and every, like the the genders and the sexual orientations and the, the, all of it, everybody shows up. And then, then us is all of us. Like it's all of us. Then, then there isn't a them. And, and I don't know. I just feel like it's going to, it's going to make us, I I think you're, you're spot on with the, the exchange of ideas and the problem solving. And I, I think it will appeal to a broader target market. And I love your perspective about listening and, and I, for sure the employee retention and culture, but man, that last one about it, it's going to fight that bias. It's going to yeah. fight, yeah. it's going to fight the yeah. them. It, yeah. We're all going to be us. <laughs> there won't be a them anymore. We can yeah. be an us, which means we can make the world a better place together. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a good point that you made about, you know, that we're bombarded with everything. And here lately, we've been bombarded with a lot. And it seems like more negativity than ever before, and especially with social media, because you can see so many things. And so it's really, really easy to have that us versus them mentality and have that unconscious bias because of all this negative stuff, right? The percentage of that negative stuff used to be a lot less, but now for whatever reason, more and more of those folks are kind of coming out. People are, you know, being negative about stuff. And so, and they don't like the diversity, that type of thing. They are the ones that want to drive that wedge about us versus them rather than it's just us, period. You know, it's it's like the United States of America, united. We're not divided, we're united. And we're the United States because we're made up of people from all over the world. You know, we're a melting pot. We always have been. That was, That's what made us great. That's what makes us great. And so we need to continue that to get back to where, where we were and, you know, and standing in the world with, you know, so powerful because we are a melting pot. Rather than to be afraid of, of people's differences, we should cherish them. And mm-hmm. learn from folks, you know, their differences and how they're unique because we're all unique. It doesn't matter who we are. We're all unique. But the the folks that have been here, you know, they think they don't have any uniqueness to them. So then they get challenged and they feel kind of weird because other outsiders are coming in. Oh, us versus them mentality they get. No, each person has a, a story, right? And a history and a culture. And we're no, nobody's different. You know, it's just that you know, have people here that are coming in that are newer coming into this country than a long time ago, you know, when, when we built this country. And so we need to keep that concept going. That's what makes us really, really strong. Absolutely. So Joe, this would not be the even better podcast if I didn't ask my last question, which is what's okay. making you even better these days? Just the mere fact that I still am serving and giving back and it's been more challenging, obviously, with COVID and everything else. And like I said, with the negativity coming by. So the more that we, all of each one of us, can make it more welcoming for our friends, our workmates, anybody that is different than than the general community, as they say, you would, we have to make them all feel safe and welcome no matter what. Mm-hmm. And so we just have to try a little bit harder during these challenging times right now and then uh, you know, hopefully when we get through that, then, then, you know, we'll all grow from it and get to where we should be and get rid of kind of like a lot of the hate talking and the things that are going on that are trying to divide us right now. So now is when we're all needed more than ever. Indeed. Indeed. Well, Joe, thank you so much for spending this time with us. For those of us, our listeners, if you're just tuning in, you have got to stop and you got to rewind, go back to the beginning because we've just spent time with Joe Gonzalez, who's sharing his messages about five ways diversity makes us better. I would say even better, but that's just me. Uh, right? Five go. ways diversity makes us better. And he talked about great ideas, fresh ideas and problem solving and appealing to our market and understanding consumer needs and employee retention even and company culture and fighting unconscious bias. So we got five ways that diversity makes us better from Joe Gonzalez. Thank you, Joe, for sharing your time with us today. We are so grateful. An honor and a pleasure to be here with you. All right. Thank you so very much. It was really fun the first time, you know, talking about the festival and different things. And great again. Thank you for the invitation back. You bet. And if anybody wants to find out more about the festival, where do they go, Joe? Well, you can get on our Facebook page, you know, Iowa's Latino Heritage Festival or our website, Iowa's Latino Heritage Festival. We just had it in September and we'll be starting to plan again, probably in January for the next year. So we welcome everybody to kind of check us out. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. And for those of you who are tuned in listening, thanks so much. And we hope the rest of your day is even better. Thank you for tuning in today. The Even Better Podcast will be back with more content soon. But in the meantime, subscribe to our podcast or check out our website at yourclearnextstep.com for more information. See you next episode.